Hey guys, welcome back to Lab Cyber. Hope you're staying safe and well wherever you are. Today, I wanted to talk to you about a particular form of ransomware that is becoming really chaotic. And in fact, it is now widely considered to be the most powerful form of ransomware. And I'm talking specifically about the Ryuk ransomware. Now, just in case you don't know what ransomware is, it's basically a form of malware that will take over the files of a victim and would lock out the victim. So basically, the victim will not be able to gain access to their files because the files will become encrypted. So unless the victim pays the hacker a ransom, usually in the form of Bitcoin payment, uh, they will not be able to regain access. So when, they so when the victim pays the, the ransom, the hacker will send them a decryption key which they can then use to decrypt the files and regain access. That's basically how the whole thing works. Now, Rayek in particular is extremely deadly, extremely powerful. And one of the reasons why is because the levels of encryption it uses is usually the AES-256 or even the RSA-2048, both of which are practically military-grade levels of encryption. So if your files or data get encrypted, but this level of encryption, unless you get the decryption key from the hacker, you almost have no chance of regaining access back to your files. And this is why Royuk is very, very dangerous. But some history, uh, who is behind Royuk? How did it start? It is widely believed that Royuk was developed by a Russian-based cyber criminal gang called uh, Wizard Spider. And this was back in 2018. Now, as of March, April of 2020, it is believed that there have been about 52 successful transactions involving Royuk and over $3.7 million have been paid in the form of ransoms. So you can see right now that the guys behind Royuk are making a lot of money, but what exactly is the method of operation? How do companies get attacked with the Royuk ransom? Because Royuk typically targets companies, they don't target individuals. It's usually companies or hospitals, ports, uh, media news corporations, these are the kinds of companies that uh, these hackers go after with work. So how exactly does the whole thing start? Well, when these guys want to ta target a particular company, they will send out phishing emails. These are emails that contain malicious links. They will send out these emails to the employees of the company. And if one of them is naive enough to click on that link in the phishing email, that link is basically going to install a particular code that will then give access to the hackers. The hackers will be able to gain access to the files, gain access to the networks. It's a bit more complicated than what I'm saying right now, but that's just the very simple breakdown. Now, what happens is once the hackers are able to gain access to the network, that's when they will now upload the Royal ransomware. The Royal ransomware comes after they've gained access. So once they, once they gain access, they will now upload the very ransomware, which will then go on to now encrypt all the files and data for that particular company. That's the general way it works. There are other ways how computers get infected, but this is usually the most popular way. One very important thing you should understand about ransomware in general is that typically you don't want to compromise the actual systems themselves. It's only the data that you want to lock the users out of. The thing is, if you end up destabilizing the systems, you destroy the system drivers, the files, things like that, applications, what would be the point of the victim paying the ransom fee if their systems have already been destroyed? So the idea behind ransomware in general is that, hey, we will only encrypt your actual data. Other things like your applications, your system programs, things like that, we're not going to encrypt this because we want to ensure system stability. This is one very, very important thing you should know about the ransomware uh, malware family in general. So as such, Royuk does a pretty good job of not encrypting certain kinds of files. Uh, for example, any files with the extension of .exe, which are of course applications, Royuk will not uh, encrypt those. It will also not encrypt uh, DLL files. If you don't know DLL, it's basically the dynamic link library and a DLL file basically can contain code or data that can be used by different kinds of applications and programs. So you typically don't want to encrypt those kinds of files. Now, there are also certain kinds of folders that uh, Rook would not encrypt folders like uh, Microsoft, Windows, uh, Mozilla, uh, Chrome, all those would be whitelisted. They will not be encrypted by Rook. However, in comparison to the other forms of ransomware, Royuk does not do as good of a job as ensuring system stability. And why? 
there are certain very important files like the system drivers, for example, which Ruyuk will not whitelist, which means that Ruyuk will actually, in many cases, encrypt the system drivers. And when that happens, there is a possibility that the systems being encrypted can actually become destabilized. Now, why this happens, I don't know. Maybe the new version of Ruyuk in the future will not encrypt uh, these kinds of files. But in comparison, again, in comparison to other forms of ransomware, Ruyuk does not do as good of a job as ensuring system stability. Now, when folders get encrypted with the Ruyuk uh, ransomware, there's going to be a particular text file, which is the readme.txt file. This particular file will contain instructions on how the payment should be made. Now, in the past, these instructions would also include the uh, Bitcoin address as well as the email address of the hackers. But newer forms of the TXT file now only show uh, the actual email address. They no longer show the Bitcoin address for the hackers. Now, why they made this change, I honestly don't know. I guess they no longer wanted to show their Bitcoin uh, address anymore. Now, in terms of countries being affected mostly by the work ransomware, there was a very, very shocking uh, inclusion. Now, you might think to yourself that the United States might be number one, but of the top nine countries in, uh, affected by the very ransomware, United States is actually number seven. Uh, China is believed to be, uh, I'm sorry, Germany is believed to be number one, China number two, and then very surprisingly, Algeria is number three. Now, when I saw Algeria on the list, I was very, very shocked. I was very surprised because Algeria is not a country relatively known for cybersecurity or security issues like that. So I honestly, I'm very, very curious. I don't know why Algeria is number three on the list. I'm guessing maybe uh, the gang have maybe a base in Algeria or something like that. There has to be some sort of connection between Algeria and the guys behind work, I'm guessing. But Algeria is there. Of course, other countries like Russia, uh, the United States also uh, make up the list. Now, there have been many notable uh, Royal ransomware attacks in the US, but chief among which is the attack against the city of New Orleans back in December of 2019. The attack was so big that nearly 450 servers and 3,500 laptops were infected. And in fact, the city had to declare a state of emergency. It is also believed that the city eventually paid over $3 million in mitigation and recovery costs. Another major victim was the National Veterinary uh, Associates, the largest private owner of uh, veterinary hospitals in the U.S. Now, they never mentioned whether or not they paid the ransom, but it is known that the malware affected uh, over 400 of the clinics. Now, in June of 2019, a rare ransomware attack also disrupted the entire computer network of the Lake City in Florida. Now, it is also believed that after failing to resolve the issue on their own using uh, security consultants, the city eventually paid the Bitcoin equivalent of $460,000 uh, to recover their data. Now, when it comes to preventing the rare ransomware Summary attack. Uh, many companies, of course, train their employees not to click on links and su suspicious emails. They do all the training, but the truth of the matter is that if an employee is going to click on a link on an email, they will click on that link. There's almost nothing you can do as a security uh, consultant or a security professional in that company. So basically, you need more of a active and, and an aggressive approach towards fighting against ransomware attacks. And one of the best ways to do this is to run automated scans uh, where basically you implement a solution that will proactively and continuously scan your network for malware and will take steps to fix it before uh, any significant damage uh, can be done. Of course, also making backups of all the important data is crucial. However, it's not just about making backups. When you make the backups, the backups need to be stored offline because the one thing about Wuyuk is this. If you get infected, and all your backups are on a server that's also connected to the network that's been infected, guess what? You're going to lose access to the backups as well. So making offline backups, storing your backups on external drives, USB drives that are not connected to your network would be a very, very safe way to go. This now, of course, brings us to the ultimate question. If you do get infected or your company gets infected with the rear ransomware, do you pay the ransom or do you basically tell the hackers to go, you know, F themselves, basically? The truth is... There is no easy answer to this. Many experts would say, oh, never pay the ransom. Don't pay the ransom. Uh, you know, you're giving in to the hackers. Don't give them that, that satisfaction. It's a lot easier to say don't pay the ransom than it is to actually not pay the ransom. Because the thing is, many times, these hackers actually gain access to the files and data of the company's customers. 
it's not just about the company's data, but the data of their customers. And many times these hackers would say, hey, look, if you don't pay us, we're going to release the data of your customers publicly. And we're talking about very, very important data like email addresses, passwords, credit card details, health records, things like this. Can a company really say, okay, go ahead and release the data of our customers, we don't care? No. So there is no easy answer to this. Sometimes it's a lot easier to just pay the ransom. In fact, uh, one of the FBI's uh, special agents in their cybersecurity section once advised, he said, look, sometimes it's easier to just pay the ransom because many times, in fact, in most cases, the hackers do give the decryption key to the to the victim. So it's not like, you know, they get the payment and then they never deliver the decryption key. Most of the time, they do actually provide the decryption key back. So in many cases, it's usually a lot simpler. It's a lot easier to just pay the ransom, accept you've been hacked, pay the ransom, and then ensure that you never get hacked like that again. On other instances where if a company feels like, hey, look, we can do without this data. Uh, we, we don't care spending a lot more to rebuild our systems. We don't care. Fine, by all means, don't pay the ransom. But again, the answer here is it depends. It depends on the situation. Sometimes it's easier to just pay the ransom. Sometimes a company can actually afford to not pay the ransom and uh, find other ways to, to regain access to their systems or rebuild new systems. So that's basically it for today's video covering the work ransomware. Uh, I will be making a lot more videos about ransomware and malware in general. So if you enjoyed today's video, please do give it a thumbs up. If you have any questions or any comments, of course, put them down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer them. And of course, if you found this video useful, share the video with anyone whom you feel might benefit uh, from today's video. My name is Alex. Stay safe out, stay, continue to stay safe out there and I'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye.